That's spoiler if you have not watched season two of The White Lotus. But mm-hmm. by the time this episode comes out, it'll yeah, it'll be, be yeah finished. Yeah, yeah. old yeah. news. Old news. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, hello listeners, welcome back to another episode. I'm Ricky. And I'm Brittany. And we are Paper Paper Screen. Screen. We just want to say Happy New Year to all of our listeners and... Thanks for subbing and giving us a five-star review. (laughs) (laughs) And special shout out today. Special shout out to our German listeners. We just want to say Auf Wiedersehen, our Dutchland listeners. Germany is one of my favorite countries I've been to. And you like such an incredibly clean and beautiful country. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, Brittany, what have you been up to? I yeah, just, you know, celebrated the end of year. I uh, had a break from work, which is fabulous and got new couches. And yeah, I I don't really do the New Year's resolution because it's a waste of everyone's time personally. <laughs> but <laughs> I I did today work on my Goodreads, uh, which is like the app that tracks what books you're reading. Mm-hmm. My 2023 challenge, I think what I'm going to do is my goal is going to be to read 20 books by authors who have a disability. Interesting. Yeah, because my 2022 was 100 books and I've done that before. For and I just really it really hit me this year like how it's sort of like hurting my relationship with reading because it's like a race yeah and you've been kind of cheating because you're you're doing audiobooks damn drag <laughs> me no but it's true that is true like I probably did like I don't know like 20 or 30 audiobooks yeah and you read one recently yeah. So I read a book recently. It's something that we'll mention in a episode you're going to get Here pretty later. soon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's called Making a Scene by who, Ricky? Constance Wu. And actually, Brittany got this book for me for Christmas. And I haven't started it yet, but I'm definitely going to start after I'm done reading the current book that I'm reading right now. So I'll and- let you know. And what? <laughs> and it, she signed it. Oh, yes. And she signed it, yeah. which is like really cool. Yeah. And it took us forever to figure out where it, it yeah, was. Yeah, like what though. page? <laughs> I was like, I swear to God, it. this is the sign. Because you have to like pay a little extra for the signed one. And I remember opening, because I always want to see people's autographs because they're always weird. Yeah. And I remember seeing it. And so when I gave it to Richard and he opened it, I'm like, oh, it's signed. And he's like, oh, really? And then we're literally turning like every page. And I'm like, I swear to God, it's signed. <laughs> and, then, and then finally we saw it. Yeah, that was funny. But shout out to Constance. I think you're going to really like the book. (laughs) Okay, cool. I personally thought it was a very self-aware, like, memoir, like, of her faults. Yeah. And everything and um, how she's learned and grown and embraced who she is. And yeah, I thought it was really good. And the other thing I did actually last night is I went to SpaceX's 20th anniversary party slash holiday party. Oh, my God. And it was the most insane thing I've ever been to just because of like the scale. Um, And just considering what SpaceX is like there was like NASA (laughs) representation, Starlink, which is like that crazy. Everyone thought it was like a UFO, but it's like their Internet. That's like this like football field length. Um satellite with like little twinkly stars on it yeah it was crazy open i mean like there's like i don't know 10 open bars wow like 10 food stations literally the best elote that i've ever had in my entire like i took one bite and and bonnie was like how is it and i go it's amazing and then i'm like this is the best i've ever had like it was incredible wait what's what's in that i don't know it's it's like a corn that's i think i think mexican is it creamy yeah, it can, yeah, it has like some like sort of cheese thing in it, and oh. they put um, flaming hot Yum. Cheetos on it, Ooh, but like crushed. That sounds so good. I'm yeah, make that shit up. and some cilantro. <laughs> oh my god, it was so good. And they had a magician. They had a violinist. Like it was like every different station. It was at the Bank of California Stadium, which is by all the museums, like yeah. some Olympic museum. I don't know. It was 
insane over so 11,000 employees and they all had a plus one so it was also very scary (laughs) like going through like the stairwells like there was a guy they had kind of cut before me and he he wasn't really dressed up Mm -hmm. which doesn't matter but everyone else was and um he he looked kind of annoyed and he had like duffel bags and so he had to like cut cut in front of me for security and they had to like do more security for him I would find him uh, doing insane dancing and work with open flames. Oh. So he was one of the performers. <gasps> oh. And I'm like, oh, that's why he had to go through security. Like, so, because he has like gasoline and stuff. Oh, know? my God. Oh, yeah. He's like ready to burn that place down. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. He was amazing. Like, I, a lot of respect he for that. He was lit. Yeah. They had hula hoop dancer or oh, not hula hoop, the hula fire. dancers. Oh, okay. Really incredible. Like, they had everything. It was, I couldn't believe it. What was the theme? I mean, it seems like it was like. The theme uh, was wealth. <laughs> that's the only theme I could say. <laughs> no, I mean, I, that's why I was there. And I was just like, wow, like what a what an interesting like world to enter into. Right. It, it really gave me like the scale of like even just Elon Musk because I was like, oh, yeah, this is like one of his companies and he's the richest man on earth. Yeah. This, yeah. But anyway, it was incredible. Wow, must mm-hmm. be nice to be around upper echelons. Mm-hmm. What What about you? What have you been up to? Well, I have a movie out right now that's available to stream. It's called Scare Package 2, and it's a horror anthology-themed movie that I worked on with director Anthony Cousins. Shout out. This was like a collaboration with other filmmakers, but Anthony Cousins is someone that I work with a lot on his films as an editor i was an editor on this film we also did the first scare package two a few years ago and both are available to stream on shutter if you don't know what shutter is it's like netflix for horror films Mm -hmm. i also went to the special euphoria panel discussion and i saw zendaya and sydney sweeney and maude apatow like the real maude apatow Okay, okay everyone we've seen her before but in person no, wait, I'm sorry. We saw her little sister. Okay, so you saw, you went to the panel. Tell me about it. I haven't, you haven't told me about it yet. Okay, yeah. So the panel discussion was at Paramount Pictures, which was my first time being on that studio. It's really cool. Free food, free yeah. alcohol. Mm. And I was like, ah, oh, it's a party. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a lot of people there. The screening was really cool. It was that episode where Rue is like running around and she's yeah. she kind of like reveals Cassie's affair with Nate. And, mm-hmm. and uh, Maddie is like finding out. Spoiler. Anyways, it was so fun to watch that with an audience on a big screen. Oh, cool. It was it felt like watching a movie. That's so fun. Yeah, and like you can hear like everyone laughing at like the you know, some of the mm-hmm. lines. And it was just a like, great experience. Seeing the QA was like really cool too. Like what they talk about? I mean, they just talked about like what it was like being on set and like how their character develop going forward in the future like what do they see their character doing in the next yeah. season tell me about sydney sweeney's uh boobs <laughs> <laughs> does she have brown hair i know she's doing brown hair right now yeah she does thoughts i don't know it's kind of like you know it's kind of like nicole kidman with the red hair she only looks good in red hair right i think sydney sweeney looks good with blonde hair Mm -hmm. but is that because she's in the that madam web i don't know about movie you know the marvel movie yeah so she's in like a new marvel movie not associated with the mcu like a sony one yes oh okay and dakota johnson is in it oh okay i love her Sydney Sweeney works on uh, classic cars. Oh, yeah. It's so cool. I don't know how mechanics fucking, I don't know how their brains yeah. work, but if you could come fix my gas tank um, air valve, I'd really appreciate it, Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> Anything really insightful from the q and I don't know. I was just kind of starstruck. <laughs> That's cool. I was kind of missing Alexa Demi. Yeah, because she's the, let's be honest, she's the real star. The real star and also Kat. Barbie Ferreira. I don't think Barbie's ever going to do press or anything for that. No, anymore. she's done. It'll be interesting to see how they tell her story in the season. 
season three. Right. Like, I wonder if they'll, if she signed any kind of contract where they can, like, superimpose her face and, like, do anything, you know, like, oh, and Cat yeah. moved away. Right. You know? Or, like, sudden death. Oh, my God. Cat killed they herself. All, dude. I could see them doing that. Yeah. Like, something really just, like. Just savage. Yeah. Or what if she gets murdered and it turns into, like, a cat mouse, like, murder mystery? <laughs> That would be so much more interesting than where this show is like going. <laughs> um, so who's the creator? Sam Levington. Sam Levington. If you're listening, give us a story credit. Okay. Oh, I forgot to mention the, the girl that plays Jules. Hunter Schaefer, right? Hunter Schaefer. Yeah, she was there too. She was there? Yeah. Cute. Aw. Yeah, all four of them were like really cute. That's they so like cute. had cute outfits and I was like, I bet they did. thank God I dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> Like as if you wouldn't have. <laughs> I know. Oh man, did you network? Um, kind of. My yeah. boyfriend did all the networking because he got recognized. <gasps> yeah. Damn. And I was like, wow. Okay. Anyways, so one last thing that I wanted to mention because I'm not going to be talking about it in our list. I did see Avatar: The Way of Water. I thought it was a gorgeous movie, had beautiful scenes. I love the world of Pandora. I think it's like really cool and pretty, but it kind of distracted me from like the real fact that, you know, white people are playing these indigenous influenced characters. Mm -hmm. And also they have black hair and mm -hmm. braids. For what reason? Right. So it kind of threw me off. And because like all they're, Because they're exotic. And I know that it's a movie, <laughs> but also like I can't get over it <laughs> no i mean it's it is like i'd mentioned i haven't seen the movie or anything i'm probably not going to and in like the first one if i do see it it's gonna be under some sort of influence like i was telling you he had made some like really like messed up comment about how the community or so the navi is heavily um inspired by the lakota which is like the native american community i saw a lot of commentary from lakota people and it just i don't know it sounded pretty messed up like however he had said it i can't art i can't like restate it i should have written it down but so stuff like that and actually i found something out recently too i saw um a black creator was talking about zoe S sildana and apparently she has said she like doesn't identify as black yes and that's the other thing is like black people do not associate with zoe sildana because of that mm -hmm. reason she's problematic yeah and that was like news to me this year right so same. i was like oh i didn't know that they don't fuck with her it makes sense though because i really don't see her like mentioned i think it's because she She's Dominican and her mom's Puerto Rican and she also has Lebanese and Haitian roots. So she is in fact black. I mean, I would say very much like black passing or black mm -hmm. presenting or however the proper. So her to choose to not identify that way is like kind of it's just like kind of messed up because it's like, well, why? Yeah. And she's given so many opportunities. She's in Marvel. She's in Avatar. But that was one thing I've always thought about her career, which is interesting, is she's always playing someone who's painted a different color maybe she just has like an identity crisis yeah i would think so well that's unfortunate she's a great actress she is and i feel like the first movie that i remember her from was drumline with nick oh cannon oh my god yeah no shout out to nick cannon i don't fuck with him <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what's today's episode, Ricky? Today's episode, we are going to be talking about top 10 favorite movies of 2022. Woohoo! So we wanted to mention that these top 10 lists are based off our enjoyment of the films. This is not, you know, a, a list of determining what was the best craftsmanship or what was, you know, the most unique story or whatever. This is just like what we like. So, um, and we celebrate that. We like, like, that's what movies are about. It's about your experience what you take away from it and we'd love to know your guys' top 10 so hit us up on instagram yeah definitely at paper screen podcast yeah so ricky what is your number 10 movie <laughs> so my list is a lot of fun movies and number 10 on my list is scream 2022 <laughs> oh okay i didn't even know wait did i know that they made a scream this year i mean you should because jenna ortega is in this and she is kind of the final girl oh my god okay so that's why recently she had made a comment like for some reason people really like when i scream 
scream. Yeah, she's got a good scream. Mm-hmm. Uh, apart from Axe. No, she, she screams in the basement. Yeah. That's a good scream. Good scream. Anyways, so Scream 2022. I really liked this movie because it was one of the first movies that I saw last year. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it did get spoiled for me because of oh. TikTok. <laughs> you gotta stay off TikTok. I know, I do. What I like about this movie is that it brings back Nev Campbell, David Arquette, and Courtney Cox. It really was a nice tribute to Wes Craven Mm. like a lot of tropes kind of call back to like the original movies like the music too and like the themes you know it's also a nice way to kind of hand the baton to like the new cast because like Scream 4 was supposed to be like that you know Mm. with Emma Roberts yeah it was more like a fuck you (laughs) (laughs) i will say it is not like the best sequel of the scream franchise scream 2 is still my favorite so interesting yes interesting (laughs) i love scream 2 you mentioned that the scream 2022 brings back david arquette nev campbell and courtney cox are they not in all those scream movies oh yeah they are oh okay you just love them is courtney courtney cox's character still a total bitch Okay, so she's not as bitchy as the other movies, but she does go hard in the end of Scream 2022. Nice. But everyone comes in late. They're barely in Scream 2022. Oh, okay. three of them. Mm-hmm. So it's just like the legacy characters just being yeah. kind of interwoven with like the new characters because we're really just focusing on like sure. the new characters. Got it. But they all kind of connect to the original movie. Mm-hmm. I need to sit down sometime, like spend a week or something like watching all the movies because i've only seen the first two. Oh my god wait you never saw scream three no <gasps> i actually love scream three more than scream four sorry <laughs> sorry for all the scream fans i didn't watch the show either oh i watched that too <laughs> <laughs> i know yeah, was, ricky is like a literal scream queen <laughs> <laughs> totally anyways so what's your number 10 so my number 10 from 2022 is 10,000 Years of Longing mm. by the filmmaker who did Mad Max. George Miller. George Miller. Why did I like this movie? It was so stunning. Like all the visual effects. I mean, that's like he's that type of filmmaker. Like if you haven't seen the reboot of Mad Max, it is. I mean, it's so cool looking. I and really liked Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, it's so it's such like really fun filmmaking. Except, I mean, you really got to see it in the theater. Which I didn't. What? <laughs> yeah, it's just... it was it, it was either that or Pitch Perfect. I saw Pitch God. Perfect. <laughs> All right, yeah. So you're really getting like two different um, polars on this on this podcast. <laughs> like <laughs> amazing casting, Tilda Swinton, um, Idris Elba, obviously very phenomenal actors. They actually had like really great chemistry. Yeah, just excellent storytelling. I it's interesting because so the film is about a gin, which is Idris Elba, being released from a small bottle that Tilda gets. Is she picks it out as a gift when she she's like a. I don't know if she's an archaeologist or a historian, but she's she goes to Europe and is giving some sort of like seminar. And then when she is in her hotel, the gin is released. It's Ilder Selda, so he's like beautiful. Mm-hmm. And he's magical. And um, he basically tells her the story of his life because he's had 10,000 years. Of longing. Of longing. And it's so cool. Like just kind of like all of the history, they kind of like insert him in. And it's just, yeah, it's just really, really fantastic. And like, there's this part where he's talking about his like first love. Yeah. And it was some queen in Egypt, not Cleopatra, like someone else. Though Tilda says something to him like, was she beautiful? And he says she was beauty itself. And like who, I can't remember what the actress's name is, but she is. She's like beautiful. Yeah. And anyway, so it's just, yeah, it's just like a lot of little things like that. It's just like very like lovely. Yeah. I guess like skip ahead if you haven't seen it. But when I finished the movie, I was like, was that a movie about a woman going mad? (laughs) (laughs) Because it could really, it really could be like if you rewatch it or if you haven't watched it. Who's the mad woman? Tilda Swinton. 
Because, I mean, it's so fantastical. Like, the djinn might not be real. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Like, it might be about her going mad. I don't know. Whoa. Yeah, and I'd never looked up. I should look that up and see if there was any sort of definitive conclusion or anything like that, but... Is it streaming anywhere? I would like to think it is by now because it came out in like the spring summer, I think. Yeah. That movie didn't like get promoted. No, I, yeah. I think the marketing was really, it was like, I don't know why. I don't know if like just maybe the studio. They just ran out of money. (laughs) Yeah. Because the visual effects I imagine were like really time consuming and expensive. I decided I wanted to see that movie when I saw the poster though. Yeah. It looked fun. It kind of reminded me of like everything everywhere. Mm, Yeah. Like the designer, whoever did the poster. Yeah. Totally. So yeah, that's my number 10. Cool. Love that for you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. What is your number nine? So my number nine is like another fun movie, but I will say it's not for everyone. It is a queer movie about gay characters who are Asian (laughs) and they're on an island. Ooh. <laughs> this movie is called Fire Island, and it's a gay rom com directed by Andrew Ahn, who is a queer Asian filmmaker. It's about a group of friends who go to Fire Island to celebrate Pride. Not to spoil much about the movie, but like it's basically kind of like Pride and Prejudice, but focusing on queer Asian characters. Well, there's other characters too who are not Asian, but most of the the focus is on like queer Asians in the gay community. Yeah, which is great. Joel Kim Booster, who's like a stand-up comedian, Mm -hmm. is in this, and so is Bowen Yang. And Margaret Cho, she makes an appearance. Oh, fun. Yeah. I thought this was a fun movie to watch during Pride because that's when it came out. And I mean, expect a lot of cheese. Well, it's a rom-com, right? Yeah. I mean, what what else do you expect? So I got to give my Asians some flowers. Not all films about queer people of color have to be these like tortured. We can be like other characters besides like the joke. Mm-hmm. Like cause it- sometimes I feel like that's what we all play is just like the funny friend yeah that's funny because i was watching a show on netflix and like the one main asian character is literally that and i was like watching it and i was like what because i find the person annoying (laughs) like the two friends i'm like why do they have to write like all the other characters are so much more developed and then they're just kind of like the quirky little friends and it's like wait which one was this never have i ever I stopped watching that show. Yeah, I know. I, I like hate watch it. I thought you were going to say Heartbreak High. No. That Asian girl. Oh, right. well, I remember texting you about her. And I was like, it's just unrealistic for her to be such like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, no, it's not. <laughs> Um, that's such a good show. I love that show. Yeah. Is this an indie film? Is it an American film? Well, actually, it was produced by um, Fox Searchlight. So that's a pretty major studio. Yeah, I feel like Fox Searchlight is like Fox Searchlight walked so A24 could run. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good way to put it. So it's like a Hulu original. Okay, I'll have to look. I skip a lot of Hulu originals because I I think I'm still in like my 2015 mindset where I'm like, there's no good shit on Hulu. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So that's my number nine. That's yours. So my number nine. So actually, my number nine is going to be tied. So the first movie I'll talk about. So 9.1 is going to be The Batman. Um, Mm. And so the reason it's on here is because I fucking love Batman. Batman's my favorite superhero Mm. um, because Mm. he's just like fucking cool. Um, I like like, you know, detective, all of that's like really fun. And I loved the Batman because it was so like comic booky, like, like stylized and the cast is great. I didn't like predict the whole story at all. Like, um, like what you find out with um, Falcone, mm-hmm. I did not see that coming at all. Okay. And I thought all the shot, like the cinematography and like mm-hmm. all of that was really cool. And the music was really fun. Like that very like Nirvana emo like vibe it the whole thing had. Yeah. And like Batman being this like little yeah. emo kid <laughs> was like awesome. And then, and yeah, I think that's part of it too is like, I love Batman, but he like he really does kind of need to be like reimagined mm. and reinvented um, with every franchise because otherwise it's like okay we've seen it okay and you're just gonna compare like who's better but like mm-hmm. I love like Michael Keaton and Christian Bale but like yeah. with the 
Robert Pattinson Batman. It's just it's so different that I don't feel like they have like they can't really be yeah. compared. And Crimes of the Future by Sir Cronenberg. Of course. <laughs> I fucking love this movie. Me, Ricky, and my partner went to see it. I'm sitting there like, this is brilliant. I love it. Oh, my God. Yes. And you clapped at the end, and I looked at you like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Which, I mean, I, I I was blown away. We walk out of the theater, and my partner's like, so was that like the most pretentious piece of shit ever? And you're like, yeah. And I'm like, What? <laughs> I'm like, are you guys fucking with me? The film is brilliant. It's riveting. It's beautiful. It has really cool, like, stylistic choices. The music is fantastic. I love the locations, the setting. I love the wardrobe. I love the, like, tech they portray in the future. Yeah. I love the commentary on society. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's like a film about, it's an environmental message. Yeah. And I just thought it was fucking awesome. So I will say that I will give credit to the whole concept of that movie because it is really intriguing when you watch it. You might have to watch it the second time to like really understand it. It was not the movie that I expected it to be from what the trailer gave me. Yeah, I feel like they tried making it look like this like sort of strange potentially cannibal like self-mutilizing yeah provocative alien thriller and that's not what i got <laughs> so i was a little disappointed fucking loved it yeah i'm gonna have to watch it again yeah anyways <laughs> okay time for number eight number eight is another fun movie <laughs> <laughs> but you might like this bullet train loved it I thought this was a really cool action movie. The overall like production design because it's set in Japan. Japan and the colors, the cinematography, everything about it was like really cool. And it had a great cast too. Amazing. This was just like a fun action popcorn movie. Like I had a really great time. But right. this gave me everything that I needed. Mm -hmm. Like great fight scenes, especially like the epic climax with like the train yeah it kind of reminded me of like wanted have you ever seen that with no um, i haven't it's a good movie yeah i've heard that so what did you think about like brad pitt's character he wasn't like my favorite in the movie i think he looks really good though yes but i was more like drawn in with like the other characters like what's his name from atlanta Paperboy. Yeah, Paperboy. <laughs> I'm just going to call him Paperboy. Paperboy and then Kick-Ass. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um, yeah, I really liked Brad Pitt because, yeah, he looked cool and it just felt like a good, it was like a good role for him. Yeah. I, I feel like I saw, because he's usually kind of like the smoldering heartthrob. Mm -hmm. And he, in this is, he's like a much more comedic, um, even like his inflection was like different. Like it, I just felt like he was acting like it, like it not in a bad way and like a seeing, seeing his, um, range. Yeah. Cause like we haven't seen him in like a movie like that since what? I would say, I think for me, maybe the last time I saw him show some range might've been Fight Club. Oh Yeah. He's fucking awesome in that. Yeah. Did you ever see World War Z? I did. Did I ever tell you about that? No. <laughs> when I went to see it? Oh my God. So it's so You're embarrassing. You're like, I can't. So I just want to preface that I'm dyslexic and I have ADHD. So this is going to make sense. I go to the movie. I'm holding the ticket. I'm in the bathroom. I'm sitting down. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the ticket. <laughs> and I, all I knew about this movie was like Brad Pitt's in it. It's got zombies and it was a book. So I'm sitting there and I go, World War Z. Oh, World <laughs> War Zombies. I kid you not. And I think I, I think I actually texted Portugal and I was like, dude, I just realized World War Z means <laughs> World War Zombies. <laughs> like I have a lot of like, I can see words and see things and not just like not at all process yeah. the connection. So I think that's just like. That's hilarious. Yeah. You were like mind blown. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, what's your number eight? 
My number eight is this movie made me feel some feelings. I think it's an important film. I'm so glad they made it. I'm so, it's like one of those movies where I'm like, the future is going to be better. And it always is. As much as shit looks dark, as much as like we think we revert and stuff, by statistics and by trends, we actually are always getting better. So the movie is Turning Red. I almost put this on my list too. It's a Disney film. It's about a girl, a little girl. She's around the age where she's starting to turn into a red panda. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of clearly an analogy for um, menstruation. Yeah, puberty and everything, right? So there's the whole thing of like you're experiencing new hormones mm-hmm. and you're kind of like, you're like, whoa, like suddenly I'm like angry or suddenly I'm like really tr- tremendously sad. And like, right. I mean, I don't know how it is for you, but like hormones can be fucking uh, like a nightmare. And even just like for me, um, I can have months where like the week before I'm like, dude, I'm like a fucking hot mess. But I also I have like a mood disorder. And so I'm sensitive to to anything that like if I have a stressful event that can like set off an episode. So, yeah. So I have so the hormones don't help the situation. Yeah. Is what I'm trying to say. Anyway. The film is like, it's so cute. I love the animation. It's like Korean. Yeah, so great representation. And I Wait, like- Wait, are they Korean? Or fuck, is she Chinese? Let's look it up. There's the whole bamboo forest and the red pandas. I and I think those are Chinese actually, the red pandas. And we're not going to cut this. No, we're not. <laughs> Her name is Maylin. Yeah, so she's probably Chinese. I think what I might be thinking of is she's got a little group of friends. One is, I think, queer co- uh, coded. And then one is really short, and I think she's Korean. And so I think yeah. the main girl's Chinese. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and it's a lot about, you know, you're accepting who you are and accepting feelings and change. Mm-hmm. I also thought it's like a good analogy even for having a mood disorder, or like mental illness, because a big part of that is like you kind of have to learn to accept yourself to help manage your symptoms and everything else. But yeah, I thought it was really cute and cool, and it was just bizarre because apparently there is like some outrage or something by parents because they're like they're talking about periods which i'm like yeah i'm like you're a misogynist period every kid who has a female menstruating parent or whatever sibling already knows about this stuff or they're gonna know right there's nothing shameful about it it's literally just it's a medical occurrence so it's just I, I literally am like what and then I was actually talking to some friends parents they got a bunch of kids and all their kids are male and the father was like I'm not comfortable with like someone else talking to my kids about this stuff and I was like why and he's like because that's like not their place and I'm like well, well have you watched and their kids had watched it they were like mm-hmm. it was more of a oh my god we let our kids watch this movie and then later they found they had heard like that there's mention of like periods and stuff i was like you should really watch it you should really watch it because i think you're thinking it's different from what it is i was like it barely barely mentions periods i yeah exactly the mention of period is just the daughter like i think she's like freaking out Mm because she had fucking turned into a damn red panda a giant red panda of course she's freaking out and the mom's like oh did you get your period and that is that is what it's like you're i mean anytime i would like cry my mom's like you got your period i was in the hospital once i had to go to the hospital for my gallbladder and my god bless my mom she's probably listening i don't know if she remembers this but she's sitting next to me and i'm like literally getting morphine oh my mom goes did you get your period brett (laughs) (laughs) so i mean it's it's it is a thing um anyway but like the film doesn't it doesn't show the anatomy it doesn't explain anything it just says women get this it's kind of, it can be kind of a big deal when you get it. Yeah. And then the mom at some point, and it, it, again, it doesn't explicitly say that. So if, I think a lot of kids are going to watch it and not catch catch on to any of this. Yeah. But they'll, but they'll see, oh, someone, someone has this and they, they struggled with the change. Like, that's good. It's good for kids to know what's going to happen. I feel like, okay, parents just need to let things go and like right to to them it's just a kids movie but to us it's more than that and that's what like makes it relatable for us to understand like oh 
this character is like going through this because I've been through that yeah. at that age, you know? Right. And I think we need to, we need to really be careful about other people's criticisms without really looking into, in, into things because I can understand if, if I had peers who were like, Oh, that mo- that movie's about this or that. And if I were to make a judgment and decision about it without actually knowing, and w- that actually has a lot to do with it. None of the film we're going to mention, but just to kind of wrap things up about turning red I was going to say the other mention is like the mom shows up at her school and embarrasses her because she goes, I brought you a tampon or I brought you a pad, (laughs) not even a tampon, a pad. And that is embarrassing. And every, every kid, again, who has a sister or a mom who bleeds like they know this stuff they gotta buy it at the store and it's it's no big deal i mean it's like you wear underwear Mm -hmm. some people choose to spank their kids i think that's crazy you're hitting your kid's private part over and over again that's crazy to teach them a lesson think about that think about that but anyway i was gonna say um like my parents spanked me yeah and i at no point was i like oh okay i've learned a lesson all i learned was like i'm not safe i'm not safe you know anyway but yeah (laughs) okay but we're talking about child trauma (laughs) okay whatever well it's just you know childhood experiences when i learned about menstruation it was like when in school that's the other thing i think a lot of people are concerned about what's taught in school and it's so bizarre because even recently my dad's like well at what point is it encouraging i was like did you have sex education he's like no and i'm like okay it is the opposite of encouraging i'm like everyone's uncomfortable because it's fucking weird we're like embarrassed because of so much society like taught shame i'm like but no you literally see like a diagram it there's nothing encouraging or sexy about it and i'm so glad i got that because from a young age i went oh i don't want to get pregnant yeah and now i know how that happens i don't want to get pregnant and when kids aren't taught that and when their parents choose to like not talk about that stuff or not talk about anatomy you're Mm -hmm. taking you're taking opportunity away from them to be educated yeah anyway the film is brilliant. I love it. It's so fun. It's so colorful. You are going to cry. It's kind of about years of the rejection. Yeah, of, because the mother is also... <laughs> she turns into a red panda, but one that's been... She has held inside for so long. Yeah. And that is exactly what happens with emotions. Mm-hmm. And I mean... I know my parents went through that. Like even recently I was talking about with someone just like the pressures of supporting a family Mm -hmm. and you know you got to kind of hold that in you got to hold it in in front of your kids and if you if you don't exercise your emotions properly and release them they do come out chaotically Mm -hmm. and and harmful and i just think yeah and like another thing about kids movie and i do think you should be critical of what your kids are watching of course but one quick thing is when i was having this conversation i was yeah i was just like well your kids loved it I think you'd really like it. Like you should really sit down and watch it. It's a really good movie. But also I was like, you know what? I wouldn't let my kids watch. I'm like, I wouldn't let my kids watch Ariel the Little Mermaid. And they're like, oh my God, why? And I go, because it's about a 16 year old who will sacrifice who she is, her family, her friends, Mm -hmm. because she saw a guy and thought he was hot. Yeah. Period. That is what that movie's about. I'm like, no, when I was a kid, I didn't like her. Like, I didn't like her when I was a kid because I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you think this guy's hot? They don't know each other. They barely speak. Right. She's like, I want legs. I want to fucking chase after this guy. I mean, seeing what she puts her family and her community through, like, anyway, she's also not necessarily the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's all I wanted to say is just like, you know, don't. Don't take everyone's criticism without really yeah. looking looking into things. These parents that are like saying shit about this movie are the same ones that are taking them to Avatar 2. You know Which what? is not a kid's movie. So don't bring your fucking kid to a violent movie. It's, it's a violent movie? They're shooting guns and stuff. Oh. And I think James Cameron had to cut out some scenes because it was too violent. Oh, interesting. But yeah. So we strongly encourage no one to watch Avatar 2. <laughs> <laughs> so ricky what's your number seven so i put these two movies together can you guess oh my god i'll give you a hand oh yes okay Master! i know <laughs> so you put you put x and pearl together yes okay. so these movies came out the same year and they're part of a trilogy i love both of these movies well, I liked X a little bit more, but it's directed by Ty West and Mia Goth is a fucking star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my number seven. And that's another one that we're doing an episode on both films. Yes. 
Okay, my number seven. I know it's going to be on your list, but I'm curious when. But my number seven's Barbarian. Ooh. We did an episode on. We um, don't need to talk about it. We don't need to talk about it. We did an episode. Yeah. Incredible, disturbing, original, hilarious. And Justice for Mother. Yeah. Uh, I think she says, uh, (laughs) (laughs) we love her. Yes. All right. Um, What's your number six? My number six is a drama horror thriller, and it's a foreign film. It's actually Danish. Ooh. Yes. It's called Speak No Evil, and it's on Shudder, and it's about a Danish family that meets this Dutch family on a summer vacation, and they get invited to the Dutch family's homes for a little weekend getaway, and then things kind of start to get a little weird. There's, like, tension between the two families, because Danish and Dutch kind of have some sort of... History. History. And the main family is kind of noticing their behavior, And it just gets like really weird. I won't say too much, but it's definitely intense. I haven't gotten a chance to watch yet, but I really, really want to. Yeah. I've only heard good things. So my number six is The Black Phone. Of course. Of course. Which is our (laughs) second episode. Yeah. Yeah. So deeply moving. Amazing acting by children. That's a hill I will die on. (laughs) And yeah, I love the atmosphere and everything about it. Brittany cried. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. I cry like every time I watch that damn scene we talked about. It's so good. It's brilliant. Uh, did yeah. you finish the rest of the book? or No. no? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You're like, okay, well, that was enough for me. <laughs> I, I just, I'm like in the middle of, I, I got to get my book situation more organized. What do we got for number five? My number five is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. This is an action superhero movie produced by Marvel Studios, directed by Ryan Coogler. I really liked this movie because it was emotionally impactful to me because Chadwick Boseman. Mm -hmm. And this was like a great tribute to honor him like although it had some flaws I really enjoyed the story and like how they I don't did you see it no not yet oh my god okay so I can't spoil it because I there's just like it's really good and I mean Chadwick Boseman is gonna be like the true Black Panther but I just love how they carried the story Mm -hmm. without him and I also love the character of Namor he's kind of like the villain but it does have a lot of cultural influences, like Latin okay. influence. And plus it takes place like underwater, oh. which is really cool. And it was, and there's like a powerful message too. Yeah. So great action, great way to set up the future movies. Definitely see it on the big screen if you haven't. Yeah, I know. I, another one I really need to go to. Um, And I've also kind of, I kind of have like a bit of a hurt relationship with Marvel because I've, really not liked a lot since Endgame. Mm. I mean, I liked WandaVision, but I did really love the first Black Panther. Is it the same director? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm like when he passed, it was like, yeah, such a shock. And it was kind of like, whoa, what's going to happen? Because I mean, it was one of the top strongest standalone yeah. Marvel films. And his character is so fucking badass. Like mm-hmm. him in um, Civil War, when we first meet him, I believe he is in Civil War. And he's amazing. Yeah. I was going to say, I remember seeing, I, I've watched some of the press um, interviews with the cast and a lot of them talking about Chadwick passing and his uh, little sister in the film. The uh, Her name's Letitia Wright. Letitia Wright. Um, but I saw an, an interview with her talking about when she found out Chadwick passed and it was like, oh, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it's always like really beautiful to see that something that appeared on like they did appear that they had a lot of these cast members like their characters had great relationships but it's great you know like it's just that extra layer of like outside the film they really did have these strong bonds yeah and i remember even like I, the day he passed and like going online i remember seeing Issa ray wrote something that just said this broke me it was just so profound because i was like as like a white person watching because i you know i'm not going to have the same obvious experiences like the news as others but i could only imagine 
having finally like a very respected, well-rounded superhero, you know, in recent time that is black and the whole movie encompassing black culture and everything and to like have that guy die Mm -hmm. like that just it's so tragic so much respect for him for choosing to keep that private and letting his career be what it could be yeah yeah i'm glad she also didn't get pulled from the film because of her drama but she i will say really quickly another 2022 film she was in was the silent sisters and that's oh yeah she's great in that definitely check it out it's a downer Mm mm-hmm Okay, so my number five is Pinocchio. Wait, which one? So the, <laughs> <laughs> the Guillermo del Toro one. I did not see the Disney one. I will not see it. <laughs> um, so why did I like this movie? The animation is f- insane. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, a week ago or so, I went to the New Beverly Theater, yeah. which is a small indie theater, only pro- one projection. It's film always. 60 millimeter. Wait, no. Uh, well, they, they, they play <laughs> 35 usually. Yep. I think this was in 35, Um, but owned by Quentin Tarantino. So it's like a very- Historic. His, yeah. And he's very like, keep film special. He won't do digital. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, Guillermo del Toro surprised everyone and, and came and spoke oh after. God, wow. Yeah, it was, and I had a feeling. So that's why I like to go to that theater. Yeah, there's always surprise guests. Yeah, you have like a 50 50 chance of a new release, I should say. Yeah. A new release, or if it's a film they don't normally, because they do kind of bring back a lot of films every year. Mm -hmm. Like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, they've been playing for years. Like, what? They always, yeah, because it, I mean, it sells out every time. But like, I went to Scott Pilgrim and um, some of the cast members and the director came to that. And that was just like so random because I went, you know, it was like two years ago or three years ago five years ago <laughs> but some cool stuff i learned from the q a mm-hmm. so he said that so as far as like the production when they shot scenes they shot the lighting separate so oh. so they would shoot so like when you're lighting for film you'll have like a key yeah you'll have a fill like these different lights are doing different things and you have to have light in order for you know film and anything to be able to be captured properly and everything right so they did it singular so that they could control it in post Mm. which is really cool because you do need as much control as you can when you're dealing with stop motion because it's a delicacy this is crazy they had 60 units shooting 60 units yeah a lot in mexico Wow. Like 60 units. Just for the sets, like everything? Wow. Because certain scenes and sequences took, I mean, two years. Oh, well, no wonder because like I kept getting like his Pinocchio and Robert Zemeckis's Pinocchio mixed up. Oh, interesting. Because like I thought he was supposed to do the Disney version. Oh, did you, you watched the stop motion? I mean, yeah, I did. I saw both of them. Oh, but I, okay. I saw Guillermo del Toro's version on Netflix. Yeah. And I really loved it. Yeah. So it was over a thousand days of shooting. There's 365 days a year. So just do the math. It took 10 years to get the film made. Um, and Guillermo del Toro, like, yeah, he's so, he's such like a storyteller and he's so precious about it Mm -hmm. and serious about it and everything so he was like this film has to be how i'm writing it how and his you know directing partner and everything like and one thing that really stood out to me is he's talking about the film's not about a boy becoming a, a real boy it's not about a puppy becoming a real boy he was like this film is about geppetto becoming a father and i mean and that's a big part of the film like that mm. but yeah all the characters like everything was just so cool like i was like oh my god ewan mcgregor is a cricket yeah. <laughs> it's amazing uh, yeah. the comedy in it and he was saying even like that kind of stuff so there's like that part where the door opens on the cricket yeah and and when they were editing it and testing it, it like with their small production the other director is really worried about like that part and guillermo's like don't it's gonna hit it's gonna hit like yeah. trust me and then it did. It's like one of the biggest laughs in the film. So I don't know. It's just really cool learning all that. And like he was talking about the crew that worked on some of it was like a large crew working on a sequence, like a large crew, like maybe 100 people working on a sequence um, or a scene. But he was talking about like when there's this Pinocchio goes into like the afterlife 
Yeah. And so like the parts of like the rabbits and then that room of the sand, like the choice of the black sand and then the death. What is she fabulous? Mm -hmm. So obsessed with her look. Yeah. Like for real. <laughs> yeah. Tilda Swinton. Wait, that was her? And Tilda Swinton's um the life creator one, the angel. Oh, oh and that was the other thing. Uh, the the blue angel or blue fairy or whatever, like that being a, a, a forest spirit. It's all the eyeballs that come yeah. together. Very like biblical and angel. Yeah. Amazing. But yeah, guess who? So there's a character, um, a monkey mm -hmm. named Spagato. Spagliato. Sp Spagliato. Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so there's this monkey in it, and guess who that is? That monkey doesn't even talk, so I'm like... No, the monkey makes some sounds. Mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? Well, you're Doc wrong. Jones? You're wrong. No. Uh, it's Kate Blanchett. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so what happened was is they had wrapped another film, and they were going to be in London together for... Like, they're both going to be in London for a couple weeks or a week or something. And she goes... She's like, Guillermo, I want to do another film with you. Like, like give me, what do you got? What do you got? I want to be in it. Just shoot me in it. Anything. He's like, I mean, literally all I have right now is, like, I need a monkey. <laughs> In Pinocchio, and she's like, "Let's do it." And he was talking about like how she's Dude. she's such a riot, and she's so funny and fun, and like he was like, "Yeah, I don't think people realize like she's just like a clown, you know." And I'm like, "Oh, it's so cool. I love her." No, I just saw her in um, Carol. Oh, did I you like Carol? Yes, yeah, it was really fabulous. So good. Um, I really love his craft. He like builds all of his stuff. Yeah, he has such like a a unique special touch. Yeah, it's like gothic whimsical, as mm -hmm. we talked about, but not in like a Tim Burton way. It's like what Tim Burton thinks he is. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what? Yes. Um, he's definitely like taken over that and like made it better and everything. But I was going to say too, he did bring Pinocchio. Oh, he was about, I want to say like eight to 10 inches tall and he brought it, he brought it out. No joke. Like it was so special. Like the way he held it, he was like, and he just like really wanted everyone to see it. And oh, yeah. he was like, I'm Geppetto. Aww. This movie is about me. Yeah. <laughs> he was, it was so funny. He like had his entourage of like, I think it was a lot of family members and his like, probably manager and stuff but he's like yeah it i drove down from san francisco today it was seven hour drive and so he kept being like the it was some yeah who's interviewing but he she's like i don't want to keep you and he'd go no 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 he's like L i drove seven hours let's keep going you guys are right with that and it was like <laughs> like the movie ended at like 10 and we didn't leave till like 11 45 oh damn because he kept like because it, it was only supposed to be like a 30 to 40 minute interview but he he like doubled it because he was just like no let's keep like he loves film he just wanted yeah. you know it was cool. I love that for him. Mm -hmm. Like, he is a brilliant filmmaker. Like, I've been obsessed with him since, like, not his best movie, but Mimic. <laughs> you know what? I haven't seen it. It's like a really trashy, like, B-movie sci-fi horror. Like, it's about giant cockroaches. Okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I really liked, um, I think Pan's Labyrinth was my first, and it was like, why is this movie scary? Yeah. But beautiful. <laughs> you know, he did Blade 2. Just Blade 2. No, I never saw it. Ones. Blades are cool, though, I will say. Yeah. What I've seen of Blade, I thought was cool. One and two. Three, not so much. Okay. But Blade 2 is my favorite out of the Blade series. You're really into number two. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your number four, Ricky? My number four is, we've already talked about this in our episode. Nope. Oh. Uh, yeah, not going to say too much about this movie because I feel like we already did like a full episode about this. And I just want to say that I really enjoyed this, even though it was spoiled for me on TikTok. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that needs to be like a t shirt you wear. I know. We're going to make t shirts that just say that. You can buy it on our website. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really need to say much about this, but that I it's on my number number four. I love it. All right. Well, my number four, I know you watched. It was a special little surprise gem. It, it's on Amazon Prime. It is called Run, Sweetheart, Run. And it's fucking awesome. 
And it's Blumhouse. It's Blumhouse, yeah. Like, so it's a film takes place in Los Angeles where we live, and I would say it's like actually well portrayed Los Angeles because, yeah. like, I I've watched like the L word. Have you watched like the the like mm, reboot? No. <laughs> oh my god, the way they portray LA is unreal. <laughs> it's like the cleanest city. Oh yeah, and like they're just you know like average blue collar workers i guess or i guess they might have kind of like nicer jobs but they live in they live in like really expensive homes like it's just so so like watching things like that where i'm just like that's nothing like out in like sex in the city the way sex in the city portrays in new york so yeah anyway um run sweetheart run so for me it was a lot like barbarian where it was like unpredictable Did not watch a trailer. Do not watch a trailer. Um, I'll try to avoid spoilers, but it has like really unique directing and filmmaking choices. Really fun story. It's kind of got like the run Lola run vibe to it. Maybe that's what the inspiration is. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and it's just it's fucking it's so fun. I mean, I texted a bunch of people, including you. Know, I was like, oh my god, you gotta watch this movie. Um, so yeah, that's all I'll say about it. All right, well, we're at three. Okay, so my number three, Barbarian. Mm. And I'm not going to say too much about this because we already did an episode and you'll just have to listen to everything that we say about it. Yep. I will just say one thing. (laughs) (laughs) That's my number three. Hell yeah. (laughs) My number three is okay so my number i will i'll just say my number three and my number two i would actually say are tied but since i watched number two more recent it's just like kind of holding a higher spot Mm -hmm. but my number three everything everywhere all at once i would say it is the best film of the year for sure probably the best film possibly of the decade or ever um and we're gonna have an like i said that episode's coming up very soon yeah so i'm not gonna say much but they did they announce the academy nominations yeah i think it's up for a bunch of awards um i'm kind of disappointed because stephanie Shu didn't get a nominated for supporting actress right and also costume design oh oh yeah the, i know it's so ridiculous if and if you haven't seen the film the costume is i mean if you see it or if you haven't wow yeah it's bizarre that it wasn't also nominated. makeup yeah i yeah i really hope stephanie has more yeah major they did her wrong. And I, I, I b- firmly believe that like she's going to get more work from mm-hmm. this. Oh, 100%. So, yeah. yeah, it's huge for her. Yeah. Um, what's your number two? My number two, the most depressing movie of the year, The Whale. Hell yeah. This is directed by Darren Aronofsky, who did Black Swan and... Requiem for a Dream. Mother. Mother Noah, Pie. Um, so this was a huge surprise to me. Like, also, I didn't know it was gonna be like this depressing. What surprised me was like it also focused on like a gay character. Yeah, it's a queer story, mm-hmm. and this is Brendan Fraser's like best performance. Oh yeah. So Sadie Sink is also really good, but she, I know. she's playing Max from <laughs> yeah. Stranger Things, right? <laughs> But yeah, that's my number two. That's also my number two. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Love so, that for us. <laughs> yeah. I will say we're going to have an episode about the whale because there's just so much to talk about. And we're not going to say much right now. But yeah, everything you just said, it is so, it's so much more than what's being marketed. And I would also say than what's being discussed about it. Yeah. Fantastic. It's his best film. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. So my honorable mention is the menu hell yeah (laughs) that's one of mine too this was also a huge surprise for me i really wanted to put this on my list but i kept juggling yeah and shuffling like through my list i'm like "Mm, i don't know what to do it was a really great movie experience and i love the satire and the culinary industry and like oh yeah um food critics Mm -hmm. like i loved it it was like really funny and anya taylor joy looks stunning and everything right especially this movie like the the like presentation shots like that they have like yeah on, on cooking challenges yes. yeah it was like so funny and like all the names yeah for it too oh, one was funny but yeah I love the vibes in this movie like yes. yeah it's a yeah highbrow it's very like mm-hmm. I mean it's about people who are incredibly wealthy who can go to this like fucking mysterious island where this like incredible chef who's very selective about dinner guests 
mm-hmm. has them like come to it's like his home like i mean it's insane like yeah. yeah it's like so pretentious and it is and i love the you know just like enough horror mm-hmm. elements in the story too like I think they were like advertising it as a horror movie, but I was like, I didn't see horror in it. Comedy. Comedy. It was definitely comedy, a comedy. thriller. Yeah. To me. Yeah, I was gonna say it's social commentary, especially on the wealth. It's one of my it's also my honorable mention or one of mine. Um, what is the actress, the Asian gal who's like she she was in um She was in the whale too. Yeah, she was in the whale. Um her name is um Hong Chua. Yes, that's it. Yep. And so that's our second film. So, I mean, as far as like that we've mentioned today, and I think there's another one, but she's, it's, it's, it's really cool when you see an, a certain kind of actor who you haven't seen in a ton suddenly be in like a ton of films that year. Yeah. You know? Um, she has a new movie coming out soon. Okay. But she was also a character in Watchmen, the TV yes. show. Yeah. 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 That was really where I, f- I think I first saw her. Yeah. Um, but she kind of reminded me of Joey Tabaki in that. Yeah. Yeah. Just her outfit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, very <laughs> like the same. It's funny too, because between that and the menu, she's always playing this kind of like this very stoic, mm-hmm. very high intelligent kind of like um, sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> But um, kind of a, a, a spirit sister of the menu I have on mine that it was almost my number 10, but it lost its position is Triangle of Sadness. Mm. So it's it's got, it got a lot of the same kind of vibes, but it's not, it's just not a horror, but yeah. it has a lot of the same kind of themes and stuff. Do you have any other honorable mentions? Okay, I will say Fall as my other honorable mention. This movie was so intense and suspenseful like i was on the edge of my seat the whole time and i was just watching it on my tv Mm -hmm. and uh won't say too much about it but it's just two girls um they like climb this giant radio yeah it's like satellite tower tower, and they're fucking stuck up there and what do they do now it's kind of on the level of that shark movie with Manny Moore. 24 meters down. 47 meters 47 down. Meters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's same, like that. It's the same crew, isn't it? The same, the same director or something. Oh. Yeah. Well, no wonder. Yeah. I never saw that one. I want to now, though. But yeah, The Fall. Yeah, it was. it's so fun, period. I think it's just called Fall. I know. <laughs> Every time I see The Fall, you're like, what? <laughs> But yeah, we when we watched it, me and my partner watched it at home too, and like he he was like exactly like you, where it's like like just like kind of squeamish the whole movie because you're like Ugh. I had to pause it. I was like I gotta go to the bathroom because I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So my other honorable mentions would be Do Revenge on Netflix. I would also put Smile on this list because it was actually a pretty fun movie and surprisingly good. It was better than what I expected. So super fun yeah, though. I would put that on my list. I just have two other films. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. Wait, two other honorable mentions? Honorable mention, but really, okay. really quick. They're both horror. Bodies, bodies, bodies. You know, great cast, great ensemble. Super funny. Super, 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 super funny. Yeah. Gen Z. Yeah, it's very like a lot of the humor was just so like so reflective of like shit we yeah, say in media. Yeah. Totally. Um and then Resurrection with Rebecca Hall. Yeah. Um, I put, I'm putting that one in here because, you know what? We could have fit it into the men episode with Don't Worry Darling because it definitely has this like... Same vibes? Sort of. I mean, more with men, but yeah. Oh. It's just like a really... It's just like a disturbing movie and... Okay. Yeah. I have to watch it now. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely... Like, I watched it not knowing anything about it other than that it was horror and have Rebecca Hall... And yeah, by the time we finished it, I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. Are there any men birthing men? <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> I'm surprised that wasn't on my list. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Was that this year or last year? That was this year. Holy shit. This year's been crazy. I know. It's been a great year for movies. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Time for number one. 
Number one for me is everything everywhere at all at once. And I'm not going to say too much about this because we're going to be talking about it next week. But I loved this. You know, it was like one of the first movies that I saw last year. Like it was a blast watching this, even though like the first time watching it, I didn't really get it. It took a second watch for me to understand like the core of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was just, like, fun to watch. Like, there's so many action sequences and, like, the editing. Just, like, the overall theme, too, is just, like... All the set design. The set design. Michelle Yeoh kicks ass. (laughs) Oh, I was going to say, it's also a monumental moment for, like, Asian representation. Mm -hmm. And one of the directors is Asian, so, like... Yeah, both Gemini's. Both Gemini, the Daniels. Yeah, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> the movie was all over the place. Which um, is <laughs> Gemini and Aquarius director. Same thing. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, what's your number one? My number one shouldn't surprise anyone. It was our first episode of the podcast. It's the best movie ever made. It's my favorite movie ever. It's perfect. There's literally nothing to criticize. People who hate it have something wrong with them. They're fucking stupid, boring people. (laughs) It is Nope by Jordan Peele. Nope. Nope. It was the biggest movie of the year. Other than everything, everywhere, all at once. Like This one is more, I would say, fits into the more traditional box office. It does. It's it's got the Jaws vibe. It's you know, and then everything all at once is like is like the 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 art house. Yeah, like it's got it's a little bit more deeper emotionally, and and yeah. there's so many more layers. Like yeah, and onion. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, nope. I fucking love it. But this also has layers too. It does have layers. Clout chasing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it does yeah i mean it's like i said i think on the more like the craft of a story yeah. and filmmaking everything out everywhere all at once is one of probably the best films ever made if mm-hmm. not the best like it re- i really truly believe that but i fucking love nope yeah how many times did you see it in the theater i saw it three times i haven't watched it at home yet just because i've been trying to i was trying to watch as many films from 2022 yeah. as i could um Same. i did not get it to everything so i guess that's also something for consideration. We didn't see everything. Yeah. So I got Brittany a note poster. Yeah. For Christmas. Hell yeah. Did you get to hang it up? I did. I hung it up next to my new computer. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. Cool. I can't wait to see it. You have to. I know. I actually it. thought I sent you a picture. But I must have taken a picture no. and forgot. Or you know what? I took a picture and I didn't think it looked aesthetic enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for your Instagram. <laughs> um. Yeah. I kind of want one for myself. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It's so good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, that concludes our episode. Yeah. All right. Yes, that was our top 10. We'd love to hear what yours are. Please let us know. You can write in the comments on YouTube at Paper Screen Podcast or on Instagram at Paper Screen Podcast. Like, let us know. We fucking want to hear it. Yeah, totally. So where can we find you, Ricky? You can find me at some call me underscore Ricky on Instagram and TikTok. What about you, Brittany? You can find me um, only on Instagram at humble underscore book underscore review. Love that for you. And on that note, <laughs> happy new year. Yeah. Bye. Bye.